Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, and in this episode, I want to challenge you. How am I going to challenge you? Well, the same way that I challenged myself about a week ago, and that is to think outside of the box. Now, I have to back up a little bit and tell you kind of a little bit of background to this story. So a number of weeks ago, my dear friend Tom bought himself a iPad Pro, a 12.9 inch model with all the bells and whistles. And he was showing this, this iPad to me. And I will tell you, the new iPads have returned the word sexy to iPads. They are really cool, fast, amazing devices. And so I started thinking to myself, could an iPad replace a computer for most people? Now, I actually had done a, um, a video on this in 2012, and at that point, for a number of reasons, I thought, no, it really couldn't replace a computer for most people. But I am going to do another video in short order that maybe has a different viewpoint now. But this is part of that. And this part was, could I, as a photographer, use an iPad to do my entire workflow after I've taken a picture in a professional level job. Now, if you've seen a lot of my other photography videos, I usually say something like, I'm an enthusiast photographer who sometimes does professional work. But the reality is I'm always doing professional work. It's just not like super high level. I'm not doing coronations and you know national magazine covers. Um, but in the last few weeks, what did I do? I did some corporate head shot, shots. I did a 70 girl daddy daughter dance. I did a bunch of architectural photography for a construction firm, and I just finished a 50th wedding anniversary. And that wedding anniversary involved not only a church service, but also a reception in, at a hotel. So it was kind of like a mini wedding, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. And the question that I had is, could I use an iPad, and in my case, not a super deluxe 12.9 inch iPad Pro, but just this regular old generic generation five basic iPad that I use when I travel, could I use this to do everything that I need to do? Now I'll tell you a little bit more about me. I almost always shoot in JPEG. Why is that you may ask? Because believe it or not, I think that these people and these companies that have dedicated decades of time perfecting their color signs may know a little bit more than I do. Shocking, right? And that's usually the case. Um, but I do use RAW if I'm in a situation where I'm really taxing my camera. So if I'm at a point where I'm at the fringes of what the camera is capable of and I need every single darn pixel, I will use RAW. But mostly I shoot JPEG, which just makes my life a heck of a lot easier. In this particular instance, I was using just a standard camera, a Canon um, 5D Mark III. Um, this was the camera that I used. Mostly natural light, but some flash photography. Um, and just a solo shooter because, you know, that's, I'm, again, small scale operation. So I, I had a couple of weeks before this event to kind of ponder and plan. And I, I wanted to initially duplicate what I do on the computer. Now, I will also say that I don't use Lightroom. I gave up my Adobe subscription a year and a half ago because I was just sick of paying subscription prices and I was sick of this. You know, it really offended me when, when Adobe went from saying Lightroom would always remain a standalone product and then it became, okay, now it's only gonna be part of the cloud services. I thought, well, you know, can I really trust you? And so I thought, I don't need you. And so I've been doing my work in the last year and a half, mostly in a program called DxO Photo Lab, which I absolutely love. And then if I need further tweaking, like in a real photo editor, I'll use Affinity Photo or something like that. So that's my normal workflow. And what is my workflow typically? So typically on the computer, I will take my images in, of course, and then I'll go through several sorts, you know, star system, one star, two star, three star, whatever. When I have the sorted photos that I want, I will then do edits on them in whatever way I think they need edits. Um, typically, it's all gonna happen within DxO Photo Lab. Very rarely will I have to take it out into a, a, a official editor. Um, then I'm going to take those process pictures and upload them to an archival drive that I have here locally. And then those images will also be automatically uploaded to Google Photos. Now you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, Mike, 
That's only 16 megapixels. They're compressing your images. Well, here again, 16 megapixels is plenty for the jobs that I do. The 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 the, the uh, daddy daughter dance. They're going to make four by six images out of those those um, th those files. No problem. This wedding thing. Um, I made a photo book out of them, and um, and they're also going to probably maybe make a couple of small prints, maybe five by sevens, um, and they're going to show them on social media and put them in their phones and do those sorts of things. More than enough resolution. Um, I'll sometimes um, so I'll do that. So I'll archive up to my own drives, then I'll, um, I'll, I'll send them up to this common drive that they can use. And then I might create something in addition, in this case, uh, a photo book for this wedding anniversary. So very simple process. But when I tried to duplicate that on the iPad, since there wasn't really a unifying app, I used all kind of apps and steps. It turned out to be a 16 step do this, then do this, then do this. And the very first step was turn off Wi-Fi. Why? Because I didn't want to start uploading all my my on-process images up to the various, to my Google Photos and other places. So I wanted it to, I, so I had to do that. So guess what happened? So I get these photos and I'm worrying when I'm, I'm driving home, I'm thinking, gee, all I have is this cheap generic SD plug-in thing. It's not even an Apple one. Is that going to work? And I hope it works and all these different things. So I, so I bring for that many photos. So I bring it home. I start processing photos and indeed it didn't work fully, but it did work if I would upload a hundred photos at a time, upload about 700 or so photos into my iPad. Um, and then I start just looking at them, examining them. And then I realize, oh my gosh, I forgot to turn off Wi-Fi. I have just screwed up this process that I took so much time to develop and I went to bed, right? Next day, and I thought I would just have to do it on the computer. And I mean, the, the customer would be fine, but my, my experiment would not be fine. I went to bed, woke up the next morning. I thought, hmm, I wonder if I could just think about this differently. And instead of duplicating the process, maybe I can just mimic the process. And so I had all those photos on my iPad. Um, again, just a generic generation five iPad, nothing special about it. Um, and, and so instead of using an, a star sort, sorting system, um, I just used the favorites. And so I went through all the photos and came up and, and hearted all the favorites. And then I went through the favorites folder and I deselected those that would be the, you know, that I'd want to get into this out of the, the second cut. So by the end of that process, I had done basically a two sort just by changing the way that I approached the problem. Well, how do I edit it? I did have a bunch of programs, including Affinity Photo, did not have Lightroom, because remember, I don't have a subscription anymore, which is fine with me. And so I thought, could I actually use these, just the Photos app to start? Shockingly, it worked pretty well, because my my photos already look pretty good, right? So I maybe straighten this one, crop that one a little bit. Some of them adjust white balance, but a lot of my white balance was okay because I did a custom white balance. Um, you know, I, what I really did a lot of is I brought up the shadows a bit because I did a lot of natural light photography. So, and that worked just fine. When I had all my photos the way I wanted them in iOS photo, um, there were a few that I still wanted to tweak further, some portraits and things. What did I do? I brought them into Snapseed. Now I have used Snapseed for my own personal use for many, many years. I'm very, Bassle with it. Um, I never have used it for a professional job. It worked shockingly well to tweak some portraits up and do some other things that I needed it to do. Brought that back into, I, in, into iOS Photos. So now I had all these photos that were just fine as far as I was concerned in iOS Photo. Since I already screwed things up and then sent everything up to you know Google Photos, I, I basically uploaded the selected photos into a separate photo on my G drive and I gave access to my customer to that drive and they could do whatever they wanted. They could, you know, they certainly downloaded them, but they could print up some if they wanted. They could put them on their phones. They could put them on Facebook. They could, they could do whatever they wanted. It was their photos. Again, I'm not a, I'm a small scale operator. And then I took those photos and I wanted to make a photo book, which I told them that I would do, but I didn't have, an app, I usually use a, a different service and there was no app for that. So I thought, well, there's an app for Snapfish. So was is that any good? Well, believe it or not, I use Snapfish, an app, 
it made a really nice book. They were delighted with the book. They were delighted with the photos. Now, I want to ask you something. So while you're maybe cringing, saying how unprofessional I am, has anyone that you've ever done work for that wasn't a photographer, I mean, just a typical customer, have they ever asked you, how many megapixels is your camera? How big is your sensor? What kind of focusing system do you have in your camera? Do you shoot RAW or JPEG? What photo editor do you use? They've never asked me those questions. The questions that people ask me are things like, uh, or, 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 or requests are, make sure you get grandma. We need some pictures with grandma. Or I want to take a family photo. Make sure you do that. Or um, you know things like, can you make me look a little thinner? Um, or things like, um, you know, can you whiten my teeth a little bit? Things like that. None of this stuff of, of, of how many megapixels do you have? They just don't care. And in fact, to make that point, these are some honest to goodness comments that the customer was glad enough to share with me when she posted these pictures. So now, last time I looked here, it's, I got a, ah, this thing, I have to go back. So give me just a moment. I was all prepared, but it just reverted back to its old self. Okay. So these are some comments. Super wonderful job. Thank you. Um, uh, great job. Great photos. Thanks for, ca thanks for capturing the day. You have honored all of us with your talent, and we are all so grateful. You capture the essence of our happy emotions and the importance of close family and friends. God bless you for doing such a wonderful job. Um, just beautiful. Bless you for your talent. Beautiful photos. Very professional. Um, great pictures capturing a beautiful day. Awesome job uh, in capturing Nancy and Mike's 50th anniversary. What a testament to in their love and blah, 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 beautiful pictures, etc. So these are people that looked at those pictures that that didn't say, oh my goodness, you did them using iPhoto on an iPad. Nah. They said, good job, because they were looking at the image, not at the technology. So I would say to you the same thing. Now, now okay, let's get real here. Were there problems? Yes, there were problems. I didn't have all the tools that I would have liked by doing it on an iPad. That could happen with future apps. Certainly, sorting was an issue. I really like using um, some of the just the, the the metadata, which was very hard to find. You can there are ways to find it on an iPad, but it just was a pain in the in the neck. Um, and so so it doesn't even tell you the name of the the file that you're looking at. So that was a pain. Renaming photos was a was a pain. Um, pain. So so it's not nearly as efficient or maybe as comprehensive as using it on a computer, but I was certainly able to do it. What needs to happen? We need better apps. We need more comprehensive apps. But what we really need is a better file structure for the iPad. Now, there was a time that the iPad did not have a file structure that you can access. So what we have now is fabulously fantastic compared to that, but it's really not so great compared to what you see on a computer and and that's that's what we need and we need utilities we need utilities to um to be able to modify file names and to sort and do things like that which we just don't have yet so those things still need to happen but it is possible i challenge you to think about this and to think about other things outside the box because what the heck, life is short. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. That would be oh super awesome on your part. If you like my channel, please subscribe. It's very diverse and all kinds of different things. If you are a diverse person and think about other things, you'll probably like the channel, I would hope. I also have a blog that's completely different called drmikekuna.com, D-R-M-I-K-E-K-U-N-A.com. I also have a, um, a podcast, an audio podcast that I do with my wife. I'm a board certified psychiatrist, so I'm an MD doctor. My wife is a clinical psychologist, so she's a PhD doctor. And we talk about psychology and current events and our kids and whatever. Um, that's Psychiatric Secrets Revealed. You can find that on iTunes and other blog type of spots. And have a great day, everyone. Challenge yourself. Bye-bye.